Hi, I'm Dan Rosenstark with MIDI Designer, and in this video I'm going to show you uh, a workflow integration with uh, Machine Jam and Machine Studio, and I'm going to go over patterns, I'm going to go over scenes, and then I'm going to go over snapshots, and, which are also called lock states, and snapshot morphing. So, um, let's get started. Um, I'm just going to play a little... Uh, melody here and I'll play some drums so something interesting to realize here is that in Machine A I am always playing these patterns so I've got a pattern on this kit I've got a pattern on this kit that are lit up and I'm always playing those within a scene so I'm in scene one now and you can see that's illuminated here you can also see that through here that's scene one and there's no way to be playing outside of a scene there's no such thing as no scene in Machine A um, and Patterns are either included in a scene, or you can also remove them from a scene. So you can have no pattern on a particular kit in a scene. So I'll show you how to remove them using Machine A Jam. So when it's in, it's in the scene. And when it's out, it's out of the scene, and all scene editing is destructive. So as soon as you do this, the scene is changed. If you leave the scene and you come back, you'll get this pattern in or out, depending on how you left it. So removal is pretty cool, and we can also do removal in Machine Studio by hitting pattern and hitting remove. But I can't do two patterns at once. So let's say I want to do this. There's no way to do that. There's no way to do that in Machine A Studio, which is fine. Um, one other cool thing, and or the difference between doing a removal and doing a mute, what's the difference between those two? So here's a mute. So you can hear that the big difference there is that when I do a mute, it cuts off the outcoming, the outgoing audio. And when I remove the patterns, it, when I remove the pattern or patterns, it cuts off the MIDI that's triggering the kits. So it's much more like a drummer decided to play a few notes and then stop playing those notes. So it's a lot more organic sounding in that sense. So you can hear the difference. So same thing, if I do it here. All right, now the next thing that I want to go over is something that you can only do in Machine A Jam. You could also do it in the software, I think, with your mouse, but you cannot do this in Machine A Studio. And this is uh, copying patterns between kits. And this is actually really cool and can give you some amazing effects. So um, I've got a pattern over here in this kit, um, which is a dry drums. And let's just hear that pattern solo. And now I'm going to take that pattern and I'm going to copy it. Now it's two kits at once. Now this next thing I'm going to do, you cannot do in Machine A Jam. You have to do it in the studio or MK2 or Micro, which is to nudge it. Um, if somebody can show me how to nudge in Machine A Jam, I'll buy you coffee. Um, so here I go. I have to be out of the mixer in Machine A Studio. I'm just going to go to the events, but I don't have to. So I've nudged it forward by uh, a half, by an eighth note, and now I'm gonna bring it up.
Same thing, I have to get out of the mixer to nudge up here, to uh, bring the notes up, or I can do it here. Okay, so I can copy between patterns, and the cool thing, of course, is what happens if I copy to a pattern that has nothing to do with percussion at all? So if I do that, I can get some pretty cool effects. So let's try that, just see what that sounds like. So I've just copied my pattern out from a drum kit to a percussion kit, and that's pretty interesting. And then the possibilities are pretty limitless there. So that's a pretty cool thing that I can do. So I showed two, two things with patterns. I showed how to remove patterns and, from a scene, and I showed how to duplicate patterns between kits. So that's a really cool thing that you can do with Machine A Jam and opens up a whole bunch of possibilities. Um, now I'm going to show a little bit more about scenes. So um, if I'm playing in a live improv situation and I switch to a new scene, everything dies because the scene has nothing in it. That's not what I wanted to do. I'm going to clear that. And I'm going to do. Now I've got a second scene, totally different stuff that I'm going to put in here. Like I said, scene editing is destructive, so as soon as I change those patterns, So that's a slight overview of scenes and patterns, and now we're going to look at how those can be mixed in. Um, now we're going to look at how those can be mixed in with uh, snapshot states. So um, I have this lock button on Machine A Jam. I've got a uh, similar way that I can do this in the 4x4 controllers, like the studio. Uh, what the lock button does is it takes all my settings, and this is everything but scenes and patterns, so volumes, you know, kit tuning, um, macro controls, which here I have macros mapped to filters on the master level. Um, mute states also are all captured there, and that goes into a lock state. So if uh, starting with this simple use is as soon as I hit lock, so I'm just gonna start here. I hit lock and now, Everything that I do goes into a new snapshot, and when I press lock again and get out of it, everything rewinds to where it was. And it's going to do it over two bars, because that's what I have it set to. Let's just mess with some tuning a bit. Let's do some muting. So when I press lock again, we're snapping back. So that's locking uh, using just the lock button. And that's really interesting if I want to get into a state that I really don't want to keep around. Um, if you do want to keep it around, there's no way to lock that down because um, as soon as you hit lock, it's going to snap back. So let's go into the other mode of lock states, which is I hit shift lock, and then I can see all lock states on the 64 grid. So I'm going to hit shift lock, and when I come in here, normally I get a first lock state, or a first snapshot, which is where I start out. So let's see where we are now. Now let's mess with some things.
that's our second lock state. This one is resonating a little bit, so I'm gonna bring it down and I'm gonna update the lock state. How do I update? Hit lock. And then you get into the coolest thing about Machine A, which is now you can play just using lock states and the scenes. anytime you can go back to your kit to play more stuff. states are not destructive, so when I change the lock state, I can just hit it again and go back to it. And one more thing I want to mention, so uh, talking about patterns and removing patterns is a great way to go. Um, but the problem is with the unified focus, if you're actually playing anything at the same time, you can only do that on the same kit you're on. Let me show you what that looks like. So let's say that I'm here um, in the first kit and I just want to start screwing around with some 30 second notes. Okay, so now I'm playing something. But now I want to remove this annoying symbol. So the unified focus uh, took me away from the first kit and brought me into the last kit, which was not what I wanted to do at all. Let's uh, contrast this with muting, which we can do. So I'm just going to bring that whole situation back to where I was. Now I commute this kit. So I can mute the kit or I can adjust the level or I can do something else, all of which is part of the snapshot, but I can't remove the pattern because of the unified focus. So, you know, there are two different ways to slice stuff up here. Um, that's about it. So we've gone through patterns a little bit, we've gone through scenes a little bit, and we've gone through snapshots or lock states and morphing between them. Um, there are obviously other videos that go over these individual things so that you can understand them a lot better. Um, some last stuff that I wanted to say, Native Instruments, if you happen to be watching, um, thank you for making this stuff. It's amazing. Uh, the LED contrast is terrible. We can't figure out what's going on on the jam. The on states look just like the off states. It's really hard to tell. So LED contrast is the first thing. And the second thing is that the unified focus is a bit of a mess. Um, personally, I'd prefer it if they didn't switch at all. I could have them both be looking at different stuff. I realize that's impossible in certain situations, but let's dial it back. Um, Thanks for watching, thanks for checking out this video, and if you're watching and you're interested in a MIDI controller for iOS that is modular and customizable and awesome, 
check out MIDI Designer, which is uh, MIDI Designer Pro 2. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, shoot us an email. We'll put an email uh, below in the description. And make sure to subscribe. Subscribe. There must be a subscribe. Subscribe. I don't know. Um, all right. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time.